All right, what is up, my friends? Welcome to another Monday video here on CoolStuffInc.com. Whoa, boy, we got a whopper for you. And this may look like a meme deck. Okay, oh, Jim's playing the Mizzet Reborn, Five Colors and Pioneer. <laughs> what a funny guy that Jim is. This deck has actually been crushing Pioneer. Um, this is one of the most played decks in the format uh, in the last few weeks as per MTG Goldfish, uh, you know, data on the leagues, the 5 O's. I guess it's the uh, Watsi official data, but Goldfish organizes it a little bit better. And um, this deck is really for real. And it looks like a pile of cards, which it basically is. And um, I've been kind of musing to myself how with the Players Tour coming up featuring Pioneer, this deck is possibly going to be a contender at the Players Tour. Finding the optimized list of this deck seems like a impossibility. You could put the 20 best Magic players in the world in a room for a month with nothing to do but find out the best list for this deck, and you probably still couldn't do it. You know, optimizing the mana base, um, each individual card, all the tutor targets, it's pretty insane. So what do we have here, aside from this insane pile of cards? We have a Niv-Mizzet Reborn deck. Now, we've seen this card in Modern a little bit, on uh, Pioneer a little bit. Again, mostly feeling more like a meme, but this card's the real deal. Uh, it's a Wooburg, a white, blue, black, red, green, for a 6-6 flying legendary dragon. When it enters the battlefield, you flip the top 10 cards of your deck, and you can choose one card for each pair and put it in your hand. Now note this has to be exactly the pair. So Siege Rhino cannot count as an Orzhov card or a Celestia card. It has to be exactly a pair. So you can take uh, an Abrupt Decay as your Golvari card and a Teferi Time Raveler as your Azorius card. You can take a Cut Turbans as your Rakdos card, Bring the Light as your Simic card, so on and so forth. So nim it ends up being basically 6-6 six, six for 5 flying draw three or four spells and that's pretty busted um it's pretty hard for any fair deck to overcome uh one casting of nimbus at reborn and we're packing the full heaters here uh the full set of nimbus it's the full set of bring the light spring delight is a sorcery has converge so you can search your library for a creature instant or sorcery card with a converter mana cost equal to or less than the number of colors spent on this spell. So spend five different colors. You can get any creature, instant, or sorcery from your deck and just put it right in the stack. Uh, note that if your opponent has a Teferi in play, this is not going to work because Teferi sucks. But um, a very powerful card. A lot of times we're just getting the Misery Born because we just want to cast this card every turn of the game, basically. Um, but it's also a really cool tutor. You can get a Supreme Verdict. You know, you can get a... Uh, Utter end to beat that Ugin that's bothering you. You can get a hostage taker and steal a creature. You can get a planeswalker. If you're low on life, you can get yourself a, a siege rhino. Lots of options here. You know, it's often going to be nib visit, but the flexibility is key. And how are we casting the spells here? Well, you can see a mana base here um, rife with ridiculous lands. It's unfortunate that Field of the Dead is banned because uh, we're playing basically one of every land here. We have a Four Fabled Passages, the only four of land in the deck. Obviously, search is very basic. Uh, one of each basic. Got a couple tri lands from Khan's block, which I think are actually quite good. I think these cards are a little underplayed in Pioneer. Um, we're used to fetch land mana bases in Modern. Don't have that in Pioneer. So being able to play tri lands is very, very reasonable. We get some dual lands, some fast lands, some scry lands. Again, is this the optimal mix? Tam Divino. Um... You know, we're focusing mostly on green sources. Obviously, we want to be able to cast our, our mana fixers. I uh, want to make sure we have blue sources to flash back our euro. And otherwise, it's just kind of a spread. Um, red's the lightest color. Only a couple red cards here. We have a Dreadbor, a Coligan's Command, and a Hiri. It's basically it. So red is definitely the lightest color. You know, we are basically base blue, green, white, I would say. Splashing black and red. About some basics. Uh, 26 lands. It's a lot, but you got to cast spells. And then the, the core of what allows this deck to happen is your seven package of Hexproof Mana Fixers. Sylvan Carry to being the best 03 Defender Hexproof adds any color. So they can't bolt the bird. It's got Hexproof. And then Paradise Druid, of course, standard all-star. Uh, can't bolt this one until you use it. But that's okay. So once you've used it, you've used it. So the Paradise Druid, four Sylvan Carry to also one Traverse the Uvenwald. It's a spicy one. Um, it's a Mana Fixer early. 
and then later on, there's the tutor for one of your many things. You've got, you know, you've got lands going to the graveyard, you've got planeswalkers going to the graveyard, instants, sorceries, creatures. Uh, so delirium should not be too hard to achieve, and then of course, just a, a fixer early in the early game when we need it. Only other four of in the deck is Teferi Time Raveler. I don't really need to introduce how good Teferi is. Um, most important is that it helps to re resolve your niv mizzet but it just buys time, bounces things, draws things, good against control, good against aggro. Teferi's just busted. You probably know that. You know, and we got we got a variety pack here. Uh, two two Rupt Decays, probably the best removal spell you can play in the early game. Two of the new card here, Euro. Might be saying that wrong. Titan of Nature's Wrath, six six for three. No catch. That's it. Six six for three. Uh, when it comes into play, you get to explore and gain three life. But if you didn't play the escape cost, it dies. So front side, it's just a, a three mana explore, gain three life. But if you, once it's in your graveyard, you can escape it, which means you pay green, green, blue, blue, exile five other cards from your graveyard, and you can cast it over and over and over again. It's a nice recursive threat. Uh, the life gain is very nice too. Life gain on Siege Rhino, also very nice. Got to stay alive here. Got to stay alive. Um, This is like will win most long games. But if you're dead, then you can't win a long game. So gain life is great. A lot of removal. Um, a lot of flexible removal here. Utter end, answers any permanent. Cold against command can kill artifacts. Uh, Nahiri can, can handle most things. Also good flood insurance. And then also the ultimate, getting a Nimizit Reborn is pretty good too. And um, it's just kind of a wacky pile of cards, honestly. Every game's going to play out differently. Feels almost like a cube draft at times, but... Flexibility of four bring delight to get whatever we want. That power of Niv Visit. Uh pretty powerful looking deck here. Uh not gonna lie. Sideboard, we get um half and half here. We have half cheap interaction. Make sure we stay alive to rest in peace against the graveyard decks. Two mystical dispute against the control decks, blue decks, etc. Combo decks. Uh one thought distortion, our only uh only big time non gold card. Uh I need a little help against counter spells, because uh Niv Mizzet is not a cast trigger, is a come into play trigger. So the counter your Niv Mizzet feels pretty bad. So Thought Distortion is kind of your ace in the hole there. Can't be countered Mind Twist. Pretty brutal. So blue white players sitting there behind their, uh, you know, their wad of absorbs and counter spells. Oh, that's your hand. Sorry. Uh, also to Infernal Reckoning. This is good against uh, the Insole Artifact deck as well as Mono Black Aggro with their Scrounders and Muta Vaults. Uh, gotta stay alive. Gotta stay alive. And then we got. Our gold card package, we got a Surak Dragon Claw against the Counterspell decks again. Same idea. Knight of Autumn, just flexible card, kills artifacts, enchantments, gains life. Definite Clarion, extra removal. Slaughter Games, this is our anti combo card. The fact that we can search for this with Bring Delight is awesome, meaning we have five comp co copies against combo decks. Uh, we can name Lotus Field, we can name. I'm sorry, can't name Lotus Field, it's non land, but we can name uh, Underworld Breach or. Whatever we feel you need to name, obviously against a combo deck. Rakdos Return, another big discard spell in mid-range mid matchups. Two Thought Erasures, uh, any slower matchup. Nice uh, multi-color Thought Seize here. And then a Blood Baron of Escopa. This card is really good against Mono Black. And uh, just good life-linking threat against white and black decks in general. So that's the deck. It's wild, but it, I, I'm not joking with you when I say it's not a meme. Like, this is a very real deck in Pioneer. And the fact that that's a thing is awesome. So, we're going to get to the gameplay in just a second. But first, quick word from our sponsor at CoolStuffInc.com. This video is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com. To learn more about this deck, click the link in the video's description below to read Jim's article. All right, let's go. Going first. And this hand works pretty well. We got pretty good mana. Only three colors to start. We have Traverse, we have Paradise Druid, so we're fine. Rule Spell, Teferi, Bring Delight. This is basically everything we're looking for in an opening hand. Starting any, any game on a try line feels awesome. Blood Soaked Champion. So a little aggro here to start our day. Sylvan Caryatid. Alright, I think I like Caryatid better than Paradise Druid, so works for me. Scrounger, sure. Mind a land here. All right. 
So we can traverse for a land. We're, we can shock to fairy bounce scrounger and then block blood soak champion. That feels pretty nice. Um, oh wait, no, we can't. We don't have a white. This is, it's not a, it's not a every color land. It's a most colors land. All right. So we're probably sent to, to fairy here. Uh, the fairy's going to die and that's honestly fun. You know, we tempo wise, just a repulse, draws a card, gains, gains two life. Puts a Planeswalker in the graveyard for Traverse. Um, other options are we could just cast Paradise Druid. And play a Tap Land. And then just cast Bring Delight for Nid Visit next turn. That's pretty good too. Honestly. But we do that if they get to attack for three. And if they kill, if they play a threat. And if they kill Nid Visit, they attack for a lot more. We're going to the Fairy here. You can see what land we draw too, which is nice. Just better velocity, I think. Dreadbore. Okay. And we could also just shock for traverse. And then bring to light anyway, I guess. Because we we find a land and then bring to light the following turn. I kinda like that actually. So let's get um I suppose a swamp. To open up our Dreadbore Abrupt Decay. And we'll say go. They killed the fairy. It's fine. Um, if we get a, a Wrath Effect then we don't have any white anymore. Yeah. We'll just bring the light for a, a nib visit. We're gonna take a hit this turn if they have a murderous rider, but the cards you draw off nib visit should should do it should do it for us. We also have two kill spells in our hand, so Take a double check here, see if anything else you want to get. Um, yeah, Seed Rhino is not super great. Yeah, I'm just going to visit. So there's your, here's our first Nib visit. And the trigger is a stack, and it reveals. Wow. Oh, okay, there's a Teferi in there too. All right, so two Bring Delights, a Euro, and a Teferi. So we're getting a Simic card and a Azorius card. Unfortunately, we bricked pretty hard otherwise. Um, definitely don't hate Euro. Uh, oh yeah, this is a bug. Um, it doesn't show them what cards get picked, but Nimbus because Magic Online is great. So they say they have Murder's Ride next turn. They kill our 6-6. Six, six. They get to attack for a lot. I right, bring to light for Nidmizzet again, and they get to kill it and attack again. That's pretty bad. Whereas next turn I could Euro and then like Dreadbore or Abrupt Decay. Uh, and also leave this back to block. So this blocks that. This kills that. I might get Euro here. And then we can also cast Euro from the graveyard. Um, and gain life, draw cards. I think I like Euro here. I don't think Bring Delight for another Nib visit is necessary when Euro can just keep going over and over again. It's a fairy too. Tell our opponent what we took. So we're good, honest manager players, not interested in taking advantage of the system. Of course, they have to have Murderous Rider. If they don't, I think we're in pretty fine shape. Yeah, this seems too complicated to me. This thing's gonna grow too, which is fine. So, watery graves. We get to Euro, and then probably either Decay or Dreadbore. So we're gonna play this land at these three. 
comes into play. We sacrifice it and we draw three. Hostage Shaker was a really good draw. Uh, so we're not going to pay any life. And we'll just take up. We have Decay. I guess we could just Dread Boar here and leave Decay. Yeah, it was a Dread Boar actually because Decay is better at instant speed later on. So it's more flexible and we're just like 100% killing the Knight of Edmund Legion. So. So we've got Euro in the bin and the means to cast it. We're at a healthy 13 life. We get Hostage Taker, steal something, which is awesome. Steal it and cast it. Spawn of Mayhem, sure. So you could also just go uh, to Fairy Bounce Scrounger and then Decay to Spawn of Mayhem. Feeling pretty good. I guess that we don't have a white for that. We need to shock for that. We can also just cast Euro and decay the spawn of mayhem. Right, we can go it's green, green, blue, blue. It requires us to tap the Sylvan area, which is fine. Definitely a wacky, a wacky trip playing this deck. Alright, let's just get the Euro and play. Uh so let's go green, green, blue. Blue Euro is very good in this deck. Um, is there relevance to cards in our graveyard? We have one Coligan's Command, I guess. Our, traver and our one Traverse is gone. Oh, it's five cards anyway. I'm being stupid. Let's play Euro. Gain three life. Pretty cool. And then sacrifice it, play land tapped, and we'll just take go here. So now the Euro's in place, so they have to kill it, we can start attacking with it. And then um, we're going to take the one off Spawn of Mayhem, so I'm going to be able to block the 2-1 if they kill this. So we'll take one to have the option to block the carry tid and stop two damage, and then we'll kill the Spawn with the abrupt decay. Oh, we can't, because I'm an idiot. Um, this costs four. Right. That's awkward. Um, obviously they cast it for three, but it costs four. I'm just being an idiot. Uh, that's awkward, but that's okay. We'll figure it out. I should have used. Yeah, I should have used the uh, the decay on the, the the one drop. I kind of forgot this card existed. Also, the, also they had rankle too. I should have saved the drive board. That was a mistake on my part. It's okay. We're gonna be alright. We can just a fairy bounce it. We can hostage take it. Another scrounger, sure. And they're leaving up mana instead of casting a murder strider. Hmm. Sanctum. So I'm pretty sure we just to ferry it. I guess they could also maybe kill this. Maybe another murder strider. Which we'll is we'll just move the combat. Let's see what they do. All right, no rider, so let's attack with our Euro. This thing is pretty sweet, obviously. Put that into play. Oh, the guy is not bad either. Um, I think we're just gonna hostage take your spawn of mayhem though. And just cast it. Honestly, we have, we're, we're ahead now. And we have Teferi Othakaya next turn. Yeah, we're at 13. Yeah, I like that. I like the Hot Sticker a lot. It's a yeah, really, really powerful card. It's, it's kind of clunky, but the effect is very powerful. Uh, okay. So they have Grasp of Darkness. They had a removal spell, but it couldn't kill Euro. So a little unexpected there. It's fine. Now let's cast the fairy and bounce the uh, bounce the spawn, and we have decay available to another caryatid. Now let's say go here. Okay. So that makes sense. They had uh, that's why this is why they didn't cast the murderous rider. 
A wrinkle. Okay. I know the guy who deals with that one pretty good. Or kind of the K you want to be scroungers, I think, just to stay alive. I'm pretty happy if they're attacking Teferi. But Teferi is pretty inconsequential once it's already uh, done its job. As long as I keep attacking with this too, I feel great. Okay. So we're not going to sign any blocks. We're going to kill this. We, we, we want to steal. We want to stay alive here. So the reason to block is the fairy's going to die anyway. Rankle trigger goes off. Uh, I imagine they'll eat it here because they have disposable creatures. Next turn we get to its act, draw a card, Oath of Aya, the Rankle, play Karyatid, play Paradise Druid. So, let's see what this Rankle does. Nothing. 3-3 three, three, Haster for 4. So they have two cards in hand, one of which is a Spawn of Mayhem. Ooh, that was pretty good. So Fatal Push can kill Urim. It is... Oh boy. Well, that as they say it is that. All right, red, black, green, blue, uh, white. <clears throat> Daddy's home. And it only hits to Fairy Time Raveler. So, so far, our Nimbuses have not done very well. But that's okay. Not really a big deal. Let's go white, black. Kill Wrinkle. And we'll play another copy of Sylvan Garrison. So, now we need to find another answer to Nimbuset. And we can always defer we can always defer bounce the visit to cast it again, which is kind of cool. So we can bounce their their spawn of mayhem too. You know they have no cards left. So Coldgin's command. Um, so we can kill stuff and get back hostage taker. Four, four, and three. Yeah, that's enough. And they're blocking? Interesting. They have no cards in end. Um, well, now we just bounce, bounce the Nimbus and gas it again. I think. Red, white, green, blue, black, and this time. Utter End, Nahiri, Euro, Teferi, Abrupt Decay. A little better than uh, than last time. And they scooped. So, that's how it usually goes. Usually you draw like four or five cards. The first uh, few divisions weren't, weren't super exciting. But it's funny though because you would assume that the, the clunky Tapland five color deck would be bad against the mono black aggro deck. But we're just playing so many good cards. Um, good grindy cards. So, we're going to want Deafening Clarion, um, Blood Baron of Viscopa, and two copies of Infernal Reckoning. 
I would say we are not super interested in Honestly, everything looks good. <laughs> I mean, Safari's not amazing, especially in the draw. It, just, it is good at buying dime. Um, the utter end is really slow. Nahiri, I mean, Nahiri does exile scrap use scroungers. Um, so I don't hate it. Othakai is really good. Kolugan's command is good. I think the traverse is like a little too slow. Certainly wasn't bad that game, but you can also like maybe shave. No, I don't think you can shave a Nimbus it or a Bring the Light. Um, it's, maybe it's two Teferis. Maybe my Verdict. The Verdict is very awkward though, because obviously we have our um all of our mana creatures that are pretty important. But if you want Nahiri, Sea Drino, Hostage Shaker. Yeah, I think it's just two Teferi. On the draw, Teferi just doesn't seem very exciting. Um, yeah, let's try this. We honestly could maybe cut, hold on, maybe cut, this is going to sound crazy, cut a land and leave Traverse. They are a Thoughtseize deck, and Traverse is kind of double duty, and we're on the draw. We're going to be a little greedy here. I'm going to cut a god, no. So what land, what land do we cut? Who, who, who the hell knows? Um... Let's cut a Temple of Plenty. Is that right? Who knows? Again, the optimization elements here are pretty difficult to uh, to pin down. Good old Seed Rhino. Okay, so hand's a little awkward. We can't cast Dreadborn, but we I mean if we draw a red source, we can. And we do have Teferi on three and Rhino on four and Bring to Light on five. I'm going to keep. It's a little sketch. It's a little sketch, but if we draw Reckoning, we can cast it. Um, we have our tri Land, which is kind of nice to start off on. That, and then life is good. Better lucky than good. So Scrounger. Something carried that's quite good. Blocking these little Santa Lions is awesome. Oh, wow, we are really hooking. No damage either. <whistles> Top of our deck, kind to us. Oh boy, they uh coming out the gates here. And there's the father. So I play Siege Rhino and they have a removal spell for it. It feels pretty bad. But realistically, it's probably the best thing to be doing. And then if they kill it, I can always bring the light for a wrath, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, we're going to have to shock to do this, but... Noxious Grasp, it's pretty good. Hmm, that's a huge hit. Yeah, they might have come out, come out the gate a little too fast this game. Um, so problem being, we can bring to light for a Wrath, but they still have Muta Vault and we're at five. And... We're still in pretty big trouble. We play Niv and they have a removal spell. We just die. We just die anyway, honestly. Um, we can bring the light for a... Because you can get a Blood Baron of Scopa. That's pretty good. And then we would be at effectively at 9. Yeah, that actually works out really well. Just get Blood Baron of Scopa. Then we get to untap into Dreadboar and Teferi. That might do it. Black, white, green, blue, red.
Yeah. Because uh, any Wrath Effect isn't even good and it kills our character, but Blood Baron, the four lifelink on the block brings us to nine, and they have three attackers and they can't kill it, so it actually feels pretty awesome. Then we get to stabilize with, with all the good cards in our hand. Blood Baron of Escopa is very good against uh against them. Even if they have Rankle, we have a thing to sacrifice, so they're firing at the Muta Vault. No fear Shakespeare here. We block this. The lifelink brings us up to nine. We take six. Ah. Alright, very clever play from our opponent there. So by killing their own creature and denying the lifelink on Blood Baron, they get to kill us. Um they had Swift End, so if you got a creature, we were dead anyway. And if you got a Wrath, you probably still would have lost anyway. So that's fine. I like our play there. Um, all right. So they had a pretty good hand there on the play. Um, I think anything you want to do here. Now we're in the play. So the Fairy seems a lot better. I kind of like how one of these five drops. We got like one of the nib visits. They are playing thought season. I do want a nib visit, but it seems like we need to stabilize before that. And I kind of like to ferry on the play, honestly. Which is a really good, uh, just buys time really well. Yeah. Could also be interested in Night of Autumn. It's not like great, but if we just play it and kill a Scrounger in the early game, eh, that's actually better than the ferry. You know, you just play it, kill a Scrounger, block a 2 1. That's, that's a pretty good tempo play. That would have, you know, been really, really good that game. So let's try this. Possibly should have brought the land back in on the play, but I think it's okay. Um, yeah, that's a pretty good one. We we'll on Temple Garden, put him against the six. Turn five or turn four. If we have five mana, we can Hostigger steal one drop, cast it, which is pretty great. Euro should be good. Obviously, missing natural blue, but Sylvan Carry did should be uh, able to pick up the slack here. Opponents on six cards. Hey, don't use my carry, dude. Uh, the hand needs some help, but drawing a blue land is not the, you know, the biggest bottleneck. Blue land or carry, dude. They're going to duress me. Ooh, yeah, swing and a miss. Does not feel good when you mulligan and you have to, your duress misses. That is for sure. We draw three basics. Right, Sylvan carried it all the way here. We're not getting uh we're not getting um blitz this game. No one drop on the draw. We're at a happy, healthy twenty life. We get to Euro to explore and then to Acre to kill. Now we obviously know we have Hoss Shaker, so it's not as good, but. Scrounger, sure. Hey! Uh, we almost got Tron here on the basic lands. Alright, we'll just cast Euro. We'll put an Overgrown Tomb into play tapped. And. a Mountain. And we'll say go. Now here he's pretty good. Exiling the scrounger. Here's your thoughts. He's sure. Obviously having Euro in the bin is kind of nice. We need some more cards to escape it, but we definitely need to draw some spells. They're not even gonna attack. Well, and that's our last basic. I think we're gonna hear here and just loot. Honestly. Uh, it's pretty well defended. Uh, they want to swift end it. It's whatever. 
So we'll discard um, the planes and draw a Blood Baron of Viscopa. It's pretty good. Um, and we only have a forest to fetch with the Fabled Passage. Actually, I guess we want the extra card in the graveyard, but then I have no blue sources in play. Yeah, I'm just gonna play the island. We may just end up looting the uh, the passage away. Taking me, so they probably have a murder send. Yeah, or Nox Grass, whatever. It's fine. All right. Well, this is pretty good. I got the old Blood Baron of Escopa here. And we're going to play Passage and say go. So there aren't many ways to remove this. It's mostly like rank old me, me having no creatures. Spawn of Mayhem, sure. Um, so that's pretty nice. I mean, you get to go to work next turn. I mean, now we get the Euro next turn also. So. Opulent Palace. All right, blue, blue, green, green. Oh wait, I'm done. I I keep thinking it's four. For some reason, I'm not sure why. All right, well, we need to put a card in the graveyard <laughs> somehow, some way. We're gonna attack. So we have a decent block anyway. And it is obviously a clock that kills them. Now to fire up Muta Vaults. Sure, we get to make a block here. There's definitely an argument towards just blocking Scroungers. We can Euro. Uh, we have blue, blue, green, green. I think we're going to block the Scrounger. And so we can Euro. They have zero cards left. So they can't play our removal spell either, which is nice. All right, so uh, green, blue. Cast zero, triggers, Nim is Urborn, fantastic. Um, I didn't keep this land in our hand though. Is it right? Discard spell. We just play, play Paradise Druid, attack, and we got the old Nib Daddy next turn. This does get bigger because they have less than ten life, but they're just dead in two turns anyway, so they can chop Mutavolt. But it's feeling pretty good here. Um, Noxious Grasp of the Euro. It's a good draw. I think we just block the Mutavault. So we're going to be uh, just killing them in two turns with the Blood Baron. And now they have no blockers for it. Oh, they gain one life of Noxious Grasp. That's super awkward. Uh, Alright. Well, let's cast an Invisit. I, th I thought this is now, now it's, not, it's not a two turn clock anymore. Oh, yeah, it is. They go to 10, it was 6, 5. Yeah, it's still, it's still 2 turn clock. So let's see if we draw up this, uh, this Nid Father here. Verdict, Bring to Light, Dread Boar. So no actual castable cards. They draw a Murder Shrider, are we dead? Um, we go to 8, we go to 12. Take 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Like, yeah, they draw, they draw a way to kill Nid Mizzet, we're dead. So they're playing off the top here, and if they rip on us, kind of sucks. But what are you going to do? Can I stay back? And if they never draw Murderous Rider, so we're gonna we have Dreadboar Bring the Light. If I stay home and they draw Murderous Rider, they, they kill my Nib Mizzet or whatever, a way to kill this, they, and they attack with everything. And we block one and take five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, but gain. And we don't attack. Even though we have a two turn clock, we just have Bring the Light next turn for like, like Siege Rhino or whatever we want. 
So I'm pretty sure we just say go here. All right, so he would have died. Um, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh, we're just dead now. So he died anyway. It's exactly lethal because of the one, the one life loss. Wow. So it didn't actually matter. They just ripped their. They just had to. They, they had to draw a removal spell that turn, and they did. That's that's so sick. All right. I mean, I guess they got us. We. God, that sucks. All right. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. They had to draw a kill spell, and they did. We don't. We never really have a way to play around that. Um, if we attacked. We were still dead. If we. I mean, Paradise, should we kill the Muta Vault? Yeah. I didn't count the account for this, but we didn't have a different play anyway, so, so we obviously drew all these cards off and they missed it regardless. That kind of sucks, honestly. But all right, uh, rough start. Opponent draws the uh, draws the kill spell on the turn they have to with no cards in hand. Otherwise, you win. Um, what could we have done differently that game? I don't know. I don't know. All right, well, round two is coming up. All right, round two. Yeah, it's great. It's actually really weird. It's just all sort of quad basic land draw, but pretty sure we can't ever mulligan a, uh, a Sylvan carry to hand, so. Point of mulligan six. Well, it's five. All right. Um, I would just lead on passage because, yeah, it's, it's the tap line. We'll lead on passage and get. Guess a black land? And you get to go. <laughs> Alright, we're playing a mirror, folks. Here we go. This should be fun. I don't think Nomad Outpost is good. You can't cast your mana creatures, you can't cast Euro. Very time raveler. Hmm. I mean, a Planeswalker is a good path towards uh, Traverse being a tutor, so. They have a mana creature here. It's very different than if they don't. They don't. Okay. So that's a fairy. We're just gonna Euro. Um I guess he doesn't I guess we just play the land. Most of fairy is probably not very good in the mirror. It's like 
Nothing really want to bounce. Oh my god, we have one of each basic. Okay, well we're gonna put this in and sack it so we don't draw the mountain, because that would suck. They've drawn their own Sylvan carry, dude. Alright, well, we've got Tron. Fortunately, now our, our two future Fable Passages are both dead, but... Got Tron. Stomping Ground. Alright, so I guess we just cast the uh, Teferi and draw card. Not much to bounce this matchup, so. All right. Um, I guess we tap badly. I don't know why I tapped the Sylvan carry to it, honestly. But I said I didn't put the planes, obviously. Yeah. See, if we wanted to or tap play the other Teferi, just to, like put a card in the graveyard, we could have done that too, but... Abrupt Decay, my Teferi. I mean, that is phenomenal. Their own Teferi, sure. Again, Teferi is not really doing much in this matchup, so... This is mostly going to be who can guess name is it first. Uh, we do have eight copies. And traverse, we need to find one other card type, or we can just draw it naturally. That works too. Um, yeah, just draw dog it. Off a Tron, Nim is it, Daddy's home. Okay, so we have a Euro or a Bring to Light. Um, pretty sure you want Bring to Light. And we have a Cut Turbans, a Dreadbore, or a Coligan's Command. Um, I mean, Cut Turbans ain't killing much. I would like the Dreadbore, so I can kill their first nib visit. And then we have a Nahiri. Um, so this is fun. This is all pretty good. Dreadbore is also a sorcery for the graveyard, so our, our Traverse is on, which is nice too, so. Pretty good here. If they had nib visit, they would have cast it last turn. They've obviously, they've obviously drawn two cards now, so. But they play their own nib, we just kill it, play the Heary, traverse for something else, so we're in pretty good shape here. Ooh. Other end. That's pretty good. I guess the fairy I guess the fairy does turn off Bring Delight. Which is kind of annoying. So that is a relevant uh, interaction. I mean, I really don't want to dreadboard the Teferi because doing that makes me softer to their Niv visit, but maybe we just do. And then I can just cast Bring Delight for another Niv. I also just play like Nahiri and Teferi here. Because my Teferi turns off their Bring the Lights also. So getting one in play is actually a little, more, a little more relevant than I thought it was. Yeah, I guess we'll do that. All right. Let's play Nahiri first, though. Actually, I'm sorry. Let's play Teferi first. We can we can um, draw before we lose. Because we're definitely going to draw off Teferi. Frontier Bivouac. Pitch the Godless Shrine. Paradise Rune. 
So now there's a creature land planeswalker in the graveyard. So when I cast Dreadborn next turn, I can cast Traverse. Bring to light. Those just loot away. Um, actually, never mind. It's not gonna work. I forgot we have a creature in our graveyard. So looting away Paradise Drew will not turn on our Delirium. The Scarab God. That is a. Uh, that's not a bad one. That's not a bad one. Fairy Time Raveler. I'm pretty happy just bouncing that, honestly. Um, and we can, like, bring the light for an answer at some point. I guess we're going to Dread War their Teferi also. Boy, a lot of options here. Um, traversing for... I mean, Hostage Shaker in the... Scarab God is pretty tough. We're like one mana short. We're two mana short of like doing that all at once. Like traverse Oth's Taker, take it. Um, I think we're trying to Dread Boar and, and bounce it. Just, I don't mind repeating this turn, so we will loot. Draw a passage, which is actually just dead. You have no basics left. Discard this for another Nib Visit Reborn. Okay. Um, now we have four card types. So we can go traversing for something. We can also just ultimate Nahiri. But then if, if we steal their, their Scarab God, they can just like to ferry it back to their hand, which is pretty gross. Um, maybe just play Paradise Druid and say go. We can visit next turn. We can bring to light. Honestly, bring to light Utter End. Their Scarab God's kind of fine because it's just Scarab God's pretty unbeatable. So I'll just cast this and say go. We're not sure we're traversing for yet, so we're going to hold it. Ultimate Nahiri is very real also, so. We're not playing our own Scarab God, but I mean, even just getting nib a Siege Rhino, Hoss Shaker, all pretty cool. Yep. All right, so we draw. We can nib it and bring to light utter end. Let's just start by plusing this. Um, we can also just nib it and deferry it again. I'll just play nib it and see what happens. I'm just start to start there. See what we draw, because what we draw up is it will inform our decision, so. Top cards. Only a decay and a verdict. Not a very good not a very good nib is it. Um man, we're gonna loot away the verdict. We'll draw a siege right now. Okay. Well, I'm pretty sure we just a fairy bounce Scarab God again. We could bring the light for an utter end, but 
Now we're like pretty ahead. Yeah, let's do that, I guess. We, 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 we have the fairy bouncer on Nimbus it, so sure. Just play it safe here. Blue, green, red, white, black. It's probably just utter end, but we'll take a look. You know, who knows what's in this deck. Yeah, this is just this is the safe play for sure. Could try and be cute and hostage taker it, but it's not worth it. They can just very bounce it back to their hand, so. Probably way ahead here, never should really mess around. All right, they're gonna cast. Bring the light. Fortunately for them, they don't know the interaction. There's a Teferi in play. And Bring the Light tries to cast the card you get while Bring to Light is still on the stack. And if there's a spell on the stack, then that's not any time you can play a sorcery. So you are unable to cast any spells. Very similar to the interaction, just like how Teferi screws up Finale of Devastation, how it screws up Chandra, uh, Torch Defiance activations. Um, Teferi just screws up basically every fun card ever. Ashiok Ultimates. Um, really one of the, the worst templated cards in a long time. Suspend, Bloodbraid Elf. Like, Teferi just does far too many things beyond what its intended purpose is. So, alright. Obviously a good game for us. Um, they belong in a 5 too. So, we're going to bring in Rakdos Return. We're going to bring in Slaughter Games. I think naming Nib Visit is actually a pretty big game. Uh, we're going to bring in Thought Erasures. Thought Distortion, pretty cool with that. Mystical Speed is actually great. Counter Nimbus it. And then, uh, I think that's all pretty reasonable. Uh, we're not going to want the Abrupt Decays, the Cut Ribbons, Supreme Verdict, Oath of Kaya. Even Culligan's Command is not very good. Um, our Teferios are basically just good at turning off Bring to Light. I guess we're like a little light on ways to like actually kill a resolve nib visit, but I don't really much we can do about that. Blood Baron of a Scopa, honestly, is kind of interesting too. It's just like an unkillable pain. I kind of think it hostage taker is too risky also. Too many Teferis to just bounce their card back and get it back from them. Uh, Nahiri seems cool. I like Nahiri. You can exile stuff. Um. I'm a little interested in this Blood Baron of Escopa. I'm not going to lie with you. I'm going to lie to you. I mean, now he has some interaction. I kind of like cutting a land of a draw. He needs to slow down a little bit. I'm going to bring in the Blood Baron and cut a land. Maybe I'm, I mean, I'm an absolute maniac, but... Cut a Temple of Deceit. Which takes that cast Thought Erasure pretty well. It's got a Temple of Plenty. Um, on the draw. Seed Rhino is not like great, but I don't mind it. I think on the, on the play for game three, if we lose, we'll consider Taking out the Siege Rhinos for like the land. Surak Dragon Claw also doesn't seem awful. It's pretty big. One ball gets a six. So we're going to keep this. Hands great. Paradise Druid can poke to Fairy, which is kind of nice.
Nomad Outpost again. They love their Nomad Outposts. Ooh, daddy's home. Okay, let's hang out really good really fast, so. All right, so their hand's a little better for stun. They have to carry it. So do we. Uh, we're going to carry it because if we tap it for mana, we don't want to get bounced by Teferi. They play it to Ferry, we can't poke it, but we'll figure it out later. Um, we actually kind of want to draw land now. Drawing two big uh, five mana spells. I'd love to go land, Thought Erasure, Paradise Druid. Unmoored Ego. Alright, so... I imagine they're naming Nimbus at Reborn. We're going to draw a card. It does make life harder for us, but now I'm really happy this Blood Baron Episcope is in our hand. So. They didn't remove the cards. And they can see. Okay. Well. You got to click all the cards. Can't just hit okay. Doesn't do it for you. You are given the option to leave as many copies as you want. So, for example, if you, if they have a card in their graveyard that you want to remove from their graveyard, but leave the rest in their in their deck, you can do that. Um, I I don't know, folks. What do you want from me? One on one. I guess that makes up for the uh, opponent in the first round ripping the removal spell on the last ter possible turn, but no cards in hand. So, all in all, pretty happy with the list so far, though. Um, again, finding the right mix of 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 one of gold cards is definitely an interesting uh, interesting task. But the Nahiri's been good so far. Hostaker's been good. Euro's been good. I can see maybe playing a third Euro. Honestly, the Explore effect is pretty nice too. This hand is great. Still been carried it all day. Mountain Go. This is the chunky red deck. I'd imagine this is a good matchup for us. Um, we have no interest in traversing, right? No. Basically, we're going to win like any mid rangey matchup. Yeah, that's what it is. So that's cool with us. Uh, opulent Palace. Okay. Let's get to go. Carry it to go. Block the monkey. If they have Chain Whirler here, it's pretty busted, but we're blocking. So we still have Euro anyway, so. Block the monkey. Block the monkey. You thought I wasn't going to do it, didn't you? You're like, Jim's not going to do that. He's way too professional for that. All right, they had the Chain Whirler, which is pretty brutal. Uh, most Chalky Red lists don't play Chain Whirler, but that's okay. That's okay. I think we're going to... uh. Man, that's pretty brutal. Maybe I could have just not blocked. The damage really matters. And again, most red decks, you know, um, are not playing Chain Whirler. And this is a classic chunky red card. I mean, Teferi bouncing Chain Whirler isn't great. It's like, okay. Yeah, we're just going to Euro. Put in the opulent. Eh, I could have scryed, actually. Like they see, like they're playing Muta Vault, so. Well, they're playing Chain Whirler, clearly. Um, alright. Bring to Light. So, Bring to Light's obviously just gonna be a Wrath, which is kinda nice. We're taking a lot of damage this turn. Um, maybe we hostage taker something just to make them kill it and buy some time, and then we'll just wrath. The 
this Cole against Command has not really impressed me too much. I'm not gonna lie. Let's scry. Let's see what's up. Cut Germans. Uh, good card. Can't currently cast it. We're gonna bottom this. Yeah, we're gonna go for the hostage play. Hostage taker plan. Just take this. If they attack, we just chump block. And then we just cast Spring Blight for a Wrath next turn. They have Chandra or Glorybringer. Things get pretty ugly, I'm not gonna lie. I just block the 2 1. I, it's like if Ostaker lives and I get to just cast Chain Whirler, that's like pretty good. I can just traverse for a land. I don't necessarily have to Wrath. You know, they play like Chain War or Kill It, we just have better Wrath, so. Sure. Ideally, they cast the Bone Rusher Giant here. Alright, well. I mean, here we go. So I guess we're gonna traverse first. And then we'll just get a land and play Bring to Light. For a Wrath. I hope their hand isn't Glorybringer or Glorybringer. Honestly. Ooh. They have two cards. You have the Euro in our graveyard too, which is pretty nice. Uh, Euro lines up very well against them, so. There's your verdict. And say go. So, they have Glorybringer exactly right now. Things are a little ugly. But, not the end of the world, honestly. Beautiful. Okay. They're playing Dragon Skull Summit. So, they have unlicensed integration for my Euro, that kind of sucks, but... Alright, uh, we can't Teferi on Euro. But, that's okay. Green, green, oops. Green, blue, blue, green, Euro, we're moving everything. Another Euro. So let's we'll play this. Alright, well, here's my 6 6. Thunder Disintegration, please. God damn it. I hope they have Wild Slash. So we're at 8. If they can't go Euro, we to attack. It's pretty amazing. Oh my god. It's a clown show over here, folks. Okay, they're playing main deck Eldrazi Obligator, which is going to steal my Euro and then kill me with it. I can't imagine many other cards in the format that win the game here, um, but I guess that one does it. So I guess we're dead. That is an interesting piece of main deck technology from our opponent. Um... If we had Coligan's Command up, we would have survived, barring a shock, so that's unfortunate, but yeah, that is a, that is a way to lose a game magic, that's for sure. Uh, the card does seem good against us. We're definitely, you know, down to put a large creature in play fairly often. I mean, they're only playing it off of Ramanap Ruins and Mutavolt. It's only eight colorless sources, probably. All right, that's uh, that's a thing, I guess. Um, all right, let's figure out some sideboard stuff. Uh, Blood Barrowscope is actually not very good against them because they uh, have Chandra and Glorybringer. I'm cool with Knight, cool with Clarion. 
I honestly don't have a lot for this matchup, realistically. But our main deck's like reasonably well suited. Um Cole against Command just seems bad. It's like not impressed this card. Shock just isn't very impactful, and there's aren't that many artifacts. And we don't really need the recursion. I think this card probably shouldn't be in the deck. Um You know, Wild Slash being a premier card, the format decks are built around trying to not have two toughness creatures. Stomp two. So, like, they have, you know, the Kari Zev and things like that that live through it. Eldrazi Obligator. Man, that is... That is something. That is definitely something. Have any interest in Thought Erasure? It's very Time Raveler is not particularly great. Especially against all of our Chain Rulers. Honestly, our Paradise Druids are real bad against our Chain Rulers, too. I would say Nahiri seems kind of bad, too. Try something like this, maybe. Like, Nahiri is a pretty mediocre removal spell. Yeah. I think I like this. Man, Eldrazi Obligator. What is what does this world come to? You know, I might go back to that that block on turn three. I didn't play around Chain Whirler. Maybe I'm just not up to speed on current chunky red deck lists, but uh, let's go first. Uh, unfortunately, we have an all teamer hand here, and uh, can't kill it. I'm drawing your basic your basic lands kind of sucks, but oh my god. That is a hand of the week, if I have ever seen one. Yikes. Yikes. Take this one in. Take a deep breath. Take this one in. And we can't keep this in the play, so we're going to mulligan, I guess. Uh, this hand is significantly better than the previous two. So keep this. Ditch a Fabled Passage. We have... We have our colors, right? It's probably just both Fabled Passages. Because they're so awkward. Um, yeah. Alright. I mean... As far as five cards hand goes... Five card hands go, it could be worse. That's not cool. They have a one drop. Definitely not cool. They have double shock. We lose our soul scar mage. I can't imagine they would leave shock in their deck though. Um, once again, I'm blocking. Got it right for once. Botanical Sanctum's not bad. Um, okay. Pretty sure we just play this and play a fairy. Might die a Chain Whirler. It's fine, though. Fairy's here to buy time. Stump. 18. I mean, we have Bring to Life for Nimbus the next turn, so it feels pretty good. Yep. Chandler is a good magic card. Abrupt Decay. You could just, like, take a turn off your Decay this and play land, but I think we're just going to play Nimbus it. Um, shocking to do it. Obviously, sucks a little bit, but white, black, red, green, blue. The Nib Father. Casting it. Survey says. 
hostage taker or thought erasure. So there's also bring to light, deafening clarion, and othakaya. That's a good one. I kind of like thought erasure actually, just to like make sure they don't have something stupid in their hand. Yeah, I kind of like that a lot actually. So next year we can go Othakaya and Thought Erasure or Deafening Clarion and Thought Erasure. Deafening Clarion with Nibbis and plays also pretty awesome. It's a lifelink it in the back. So they can't really play Bunk Rusher here. Nice mulligan to five. Nice mulligan to five. I kind of wouldn't mind, like, an Enter the God Eternals um, as a one-of in the sideboard for, like, tutoring four in spots like this. Just, like, life gain, removal, 4-4. Four, four. It's a pretty good effect to have a one-of access to. Um, all right. Yeah, let's just keep it the way it is. I think I'm pretty happy. We didn't all get a five that game, and, you know, the game wasn't really, wasn't really close. You know, we just... Play our stuff on time. It does suck that Chain Roller is still getting his Paradise Druid. Honestly, it looks like they've kind of like skewed their deck towards uh, being good against us. Like Chain Whirl playing Chain Whirler again, and then the main deck Obligators seem really, really good against us. Um, Bone Mulligans to six. We have Turn Two Thought Erasure. And a Scryland. And Pain Freelands. And a Decay. We're going to keep this end. It's like not great. But we can cast Erasure and Decay, taking no Pain and Scry. Put them along as a 5. So I think I'm actually happy they have Soul Scar Mage on 5 cards. It's such a low impact card. It's reverse. It's pretty good. Scry says Fabled Passage. I think we're into that. Stomp and attack for two. Sure. All right. So definitely rocking the thought erasure here. Phoenix land. So getting the Phoenix is nice. Um, I would say Shrine can go in the graveyard. We're not really interested in um, another non-red land. We have Traverse for a land if we need it. So. so they have one card in hand. It is a Rammy Nap Ruins. They have no cards in hand. Or no cards that we know about. Sure. So we're pretty happy just to decay this. We'll take two. It's fine. Not really worried about that. Um, it's not bad either. So just tap land here. We could like play a land. Nah, that seems crazy. Play a land on traverse. If we shock for traverse, we could set up a turn five nib it, but let's just uh play decay here and play tap land. Next turn we can just hostage taker the soul scar mage. We're already taking two off of the uh the bone crusher giants, let's not take any more if possible. Phoenix is pretty good. Underplayed card in Pioneer. Currently have three card types in the graveyard. Once the acre goes to the graveyard, we'll have four. Good draw, good draw. All right, so now we just hostage take the uh, Chain Whirler Passage for Mountain. And now we have Nib the next turn also, so... Also traverse for a siege rhino. They just draw a lightning strike. That's fine. It's obviously not ideal, but um, they have a they have battlefield for it. Oh, they're playing four just as a colorless land for the uh, the Eldrazi. So we jam Nibmizit, or we can traverse for siege rhino. If we jam Nibmizit, they can't steal it, which is good. Yeah, we're gonna jam Nibmizit. They can't. Uh, they can't 
draw obligator, so that's five mana total. And we can just traverse for a rhino next turn. Uh, we have double green, double blue. It's black or white. Does it matter? Probably matters, but it's white for wrath, black for extra removal spells. I don't know. Daddy's home. All right. Yeah, well, maybe, maybe I should have gotten the white. God damn it. All right. So there you go. Not sure what they can draw here. But. Pretty sure it's Traverse for Siege Rhino, Bring to Light for Siege Rhinos. Can wrap this one up pretty good. We have even have Utter End for Phoenix if they draw it. There we go, Scoop. Alright, cool. So despite getting game one Eldrazi obligated, we're able to take it down. Two and one. Two and one. We'll scoop lag here. Let's keep right on rolling along here. I want to remind everyone that we have a companion article to this video. If you're watching this on YouTube and not watching it on CoolStuffInc.com proper, you got to get that browser ready. All right, hop on over to CoolStuffInc.com. There's always an article with my video here on Mondays on CoolStuffInc.com. There's a companion article that goes to the video. I do a video Monday and an article Friday. So full written article on Friday, like full length, and then the shorter video written article on Mondays accompanied by the uh, the video that you're watching right now. So and if you're watching on the YouTube uh, on Cool Stuff, make sure you subscribe also. Lots of cool stuff there too. But check out the, check out the site and subscribe. Best of both worlds. On the play. Let's go. Um, okay. So, definitely an interesting one. We're going to keep and traverse for a land. It's just going to be a plains, I think. So, you know, they thought he's my carry, they still cast stuff. Yeah. Traverse has been good so far. I like the one traverse. I only got that many of them, but I've been pretty impressed with it. Good card, you know. Good card. Turn one Mutavault. Bomac Courier. Not Aether Vial. Alright, so Bomac Courier is pretty good against our uh, Sylvan Carry. I think we can keep attacking, but I think we're in fine shape here. Oath of Kai is not bad either. And if they have a Soul Artifact, they're in for a, a World of Hurt. They do. Alright, well. Hate to break it to your opponent, but uh, you're getting blown out. Uh, you're getting blown out. So, yeah. Reset your courier. Ah, oh, that's... Alright, so we're playing the Sanctum because we... It's just tap land later anyway, so... Might as well just play it on tap now. We always have the option to shock to play this untapped. We'll never have the option to play this untapped ever again. Beyond this turn, so... Courier's back. Wow. Oh, they're gonna install Artifact again. That'd be pretty wild. Alright. I only got four cards in hand. And I imagine Teferi's dead here. Yes. All right, so we've drawn a, a decent amount of lands here, but um, pretty sure we just Rhino and play its Appland. They don't have much that can get through a Rhino. They want a Shadow Blast that feels, seems good to me. So and if they have an Insul Artifact Effect, we can just get to bounce it. So now let's play, we have blue, blue, green, green. Right, so let's play the white, black, white land, I guess. Wild Slash targeting me. Damn, that's aggressive. Just trying to empty their hand for Courier, I guess. Oh boy. 
Party time. All right. Um, so here's what we're going to do. I think we're going to have to fairy bounce one. They're going to sack it in response to fizzle the card draw, and then we'll Othakaya the other one. Will require shocking, but blue, white. Yeah. So we do need to keep these quarters under control. Oh, they let it happen. Well, now we definitely owe the guy the other one, right? So, like, they stack this one, they lose the courier in their hand also. Sweet. That's a happy turn for us. Now they want to poke the Teferi. We gain more life. We don't really care about Teferi being in play. We just care about being alive, so. I'd like the Nahiri, too. The looting is pretty relevant. It's like a self uh self-contained threat. That's pretty good. Alright, so I guess we're actually just gonna Nahiri the the Bomac Courier then. Um yeah. We need to play another carry. It's it. We almost want them to attack our uh, our planeswalkers, so yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Cut Turbin's not very good in this matchup because uh, obviously their big threats usually have five toughness, but so here comes Meteor Vault and another Meteor Vault. They're coming at me, which makes me very, very scared about a possible shrapnel blast. But I guess we're pretty well insulated against it. Oh, that's pretty good. Um, so plus this. Let's loot away our land here and see what turns up and figure out what we're going to do. Cole against man. What the? We, we found a good Cole against man matchup. Um... I mean, getting Siege Rhino here is pretty cool. Just like, it brings us to 10, and then we get to bounce Othakai next turn and go up to 13. We have multiple blockers from Muta Vaults. Yeah, I think I'm pretty fine just getting Siege Rhino here. We get Nib Mizzet, we have to like tap out of our blockers, and I guess they can't kill it, but... We're just stuck at seven life, and then maybe they could like sneak around and deal those last few points. I'm gonna get Seed Rhino. White, blue, black, green. Like, it's going to be pretty hard to lose from this spot. And they actually have, like, zero artifacts for blasts, like, anyway. So, like, double blasts isn't going to be even an option, really. So, this feels pretty good. Teferi is, uh, pretty nice against the soul artifact. And you get some nice cyborg cards this one, too. So, let's, uh, take a look at the old cyborg here. We're not going to bring Mystical Dispute. It's not really worth it. Uh... We have two Infernal Reckonings, which are awesome. A Night of Autumn, which is awesome. Um, I would say that we are not interested in... Honestly, everything looks really good. Maybe we cut like one nib visit. Like Hostage Shaker. I guess Nahiri is. I mean, Nahiri's pretty good too, honestly. Nahiri can answer, answer a 
Dark Steel Citadel, Enchantment with and Soul Artifact. I like Uthakai, I like Coligan's Command. I like Teferi. Teferi also turns out their are their counter spells, which is pretty important, so I think Teferi is actually really important. Um Cut to Ribbons is still it's still fine, just like not bad. I like the life gain on the Siege Rhino. I guess Utter End probably isn't necessary. And then maybe the Verdict, honestly. Sounds weird, but they're not really going super wide usually, and killing our own mana creatures is kind of tough. Yeah, I think I want to just one for one them. I might not get a lot with Verdict. I think we're a very good one for one deck. Also, Knight of Autumn is insane with Teferi, so. I can see a Knight of Autumn main, honestly. Maybe Knight, maybe Knight of Autumn is better main than Coligan's Command. It kills artifacts also, but just like a much more reasonable card. It's better with Teferi. It can gain life when we need to. It can be a beater when we need it to be. Coligan's command has been pretty unimpressive. Um, yeah, this is an easy keep. We have an Infernal Reckoning. So, and Coligan's command. So this is the one matchup where Coligan's command is pretty good. Um, probably going to hold this Traverse until the end of time. Ghostfire Blade. All right. So we're going to go Temple of Deceit to start, so we have the Reckoning up on turn two. Drawing an Island there, not super cool, but... Teferi Time Raveler, with no ways to currently cast it, unless I want to Traverse for an Island. I mean, Planes. I mean, I don't want to draw land, but... Uh, I guess actually Teferi is good against their counter spells. they have counter spells. I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it. Put it on top. We've got to get, we've got to traverse, traverse for land, we'll Traverse for land. We only have... Instance in lands right now, anyway, so Delirium is kind of a pipe dream in the current state of uh, affairs. Please, and soul artifact. Man, you are. You're gutsy. Gutsy, gutsy, gutsy. So, it's two for one of them, gain five life. I guess you just traverse for planes. So, we are a little light on gas right now, uh, but... Yeah. Oh, this is a... Ah, actually, this is pretty good. It's a Stone Coil Serpent? That card's really good against us. I don't know if we even answered that card. Holy crap. This card's insane. Oh, they're playing the Ghost Fire Blade, too? For that. All right, well, now we have Nimbus to build, too. This card's, like, pretty real, though. Um, we can do a fairy here and plus. Just, like, soak some damage up. Um, yeah, I kind of like that. And we'll just, then the next, I guess we can't, then we, then we can't call against command next turn, though. Man. We only have two cards, so bouncing Ghost Fire Blade's pretty bad. Uh, we only have... I guess Reckoning is the only way we have to deal with a, a Stone Coil Serpent. It's only a 2 2 at the end of the world, but if put a Soul Artifact on that, it's going to be pretty gross. I think I would like set up for Coligan's Command next turn. It's very good there. Um, Abrupt Decay also. You probably want to just ferry this Frenzy. And then they play Frenzy again, we play Nib Mizzet. Sure. We could also just Coligan's Command to kill the Ghostfire Blade and the Courier. Only have one block, so you can't decay and Coligan's Command. 
Killing Ghostfire Blade and Courier definitely buys some time. Maybe we just cast the Nimbus in here, though. It's pretty hard not to cast an Nimbus at 16 life. Alright. Bring Delight or Bring Delight? Wow, that was a brick. There are two Rhinos in there? That's pretty gross. Alright, I mean... We also can... Oh, I boarded the Wrath out. Ooh, that's awkward. I mean, I could bring Delight for a... Uh, an Inferno Reckoning if things get really gross and I have to, you know? Um, is there a double Muta Vault now? Okay, they animated the summoning sick muta vault. Oopsie. All right, so this might be saying that they have a shrapnel blast, which is fine by me. Better at nib visit than at me, so. Nope. Just want to draw a card with courier, sure. Hmm. Interesting. You have Knight of Autumn, which could kill the Frenzy. Spending five mana to cast Knight of Autumn, that was pretty bad. It might just be Siege Rhino, honestly. Let me just try and turn the corner and kill them. I guess Inferno Reckoning is in play. We could just bring Delight for Inferno Reckoning, which just seems insane, but we just don't have a way to kill Stonecoil Serpent and we can kill everything else easily. Um, that seems so ridiculous. And if I get Siege Rhino, it's dead on board, right? They got a seven. Let me just have two lethal attackers. Yeah, just get the, just get siege rhino. Obviously, if they rip off like the nastiest frenzy turn of all time, we could definitely die. But let's just cast this and see what we have. Blue, black. Um, I think it's just Siege Rhino. Given that I have two kill spells in my hand and a 6-6 six, six in play, they probably can't kill. I think it's just Siege Rhino. Anything else just feels too conservative. Like, we could just try and, we could, like, we can try and poke through their stuff. We might just die. Like, if we, if we get the Knight of Autumn and kill the Frenzy... Then Shrapnel Blast kills us, but I guess they have that. We just push and cast out a Frenzy anyway. Let me get Siege Rhino. Alright, do your worst. Don't do your worst. It's easily just like one drop, one drop, one drop, Shrapnel shrap Blast, Shrapnel Blast, Shrapnel Blast, we're dead. Uh oh. It's important to note that they are dead to the Nimbus by itself now with Coligan's command, so. Alright, they're going for it. Shroud the Blast targeting me. That's the first spell they guessed. Then they play a land. So we are fortunately at, at fortunately at six, not five. And they're saying go. I mean, if both Muta Vaults block, I mean, they still die, so. I 
mean, they died in the cold. They don't know about cold against command, but I mean, they're still. I mean, they weren't dead, honestly. They could have blocked the bolt and run a runner me or something, but sure. Take it. So, that went pretty well for us as well, honestly. Inferno Reckoning, key card, key card. Sneaky little, uh, sneaky little card printed in like a core set or something. All right, so we are, after, after getting one outered by the Mono Black Aggro deck, we are now 3 0. So, doing pretty good so far. Um, deck seems sweet. Nimbus is a pretty fun card, not gonna lie. I was thinking to myself, uh, in that game, if Nimbus should be in my cube. I think it should. Try to take it easy on like the, the heavy colored cards. There's only like five uh cards that are more than two colors. Um so and then I think Nib Mizzet could like top that off as like the sixth one. It's like a pretty fun, like silly build around me card. And Bring to Light is already in my cube, so it's pretty cool. Should have more time to do cube stuff. Cube stuff's fun. If y'all like to see some cube content from me on coolstuffinc.com, um articles things like that let me know in the comments because feedback is great and i do enjoy doing it definitely gone to the days of being you know 22 23 years old with not much to do and just cubing three times a week with my friends but still love cubing still love cubing on the play i mean it's like a pretty awkward hand but we can definitely keep it this is an island, so we have perfect mana. Perfect mana. We have a kill spell, it's a fairy, and then is it. We're gonna keep. What land we play is a tough question. Because if we go passage for island on one, um, then we can't play decay on two. But if we go temple garden, I think we go, maybe we're gonna, go, we're gonna go temple garden. Temple garden means that if we want to cast decay on two, we can. And if we want to fail passage for an island, we also can. So yeah, cool. Spire Bluff Canal, sure. Okay. Like a Phoenix deck or something? Ooh, seventh edition lands. As a an old school Magic Online player. When Magic Online first came out, seventh edition was the oldest set available so these are essentially the beta lands of magic online so like those these are the even though there are white bordered core set lands they were the cool lands to play with back in the day before there was all the mirage lands all, all the cool old lands again this was your oldest land and uh it's a cool one all right so you're getting island like our island's great obviously saga but these 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 didn't exist on magic Online back in the day Either these or invasion lands invasion lands are also good but I'm just kind of doing it. I don't think our decay is any very good, but to ferry and we're at a plus. Um, I'm not totally sure what they're doing yet. I don't know if they're playing finale or not. Turns that off. Um, just don't really have a need to draw a card. We can just draw a card next turn. Playing Wild Slash or whatever, we don't really know, so just just chill for a minute. Goblin Electromancer. Okay. Well, now our decay is live. That's kind of cool. Oh, they're playing the combo deck. Are we just dead? This is the Underworld Breach combo deck. Oh, God. No. Okay. Well, that's pretty good for us. I mean, now our Teferi does stuff. It just, they just burned a Hidden Stirrings. Did, did they not encode this card? I guess they had one in the graveyard for Underworld Breach or whatever. All right, I mean, we're going to bounce one and kill one. Um, I guess you want to you want to kill the Electromancer and bounce the Baral because Baral is legendary and they can have more than one. So Botanical Sanctum. Uh, we can just get a Swamp, I guess. 
can not take damage. Does it matter, really? I don't think so. It does matter. Crap. No, I can't, and I can't guess the name of it. Uh, I screwed up. Oh, no. If I get a swamp, then my temple guard, my only source of green and white. That was that was that was really really bad. Just huge huge error here. All right, we have to kill this thing. So big mistake on my part. Hopefully, I don't get too punished for it. That sucks. So those unfamiliar underworld breach is a uh, two man enchantment. It's like a, it gives all your cards in your graveyard escape, and it's a pretty busted card. It's definitely a pretty big combo card. Yeah, uh, yeah. So we just get max punished here. All right, let's play uh, Nahiri. Let's loot away one of these sanctums and draw Paradise Druid. All right. Um, definitely seems like a good foil to our deck. Just like the fast combo deck against our slow, slow to set up mid rangey deck. But we have some stuff in the sideboard, you know. Also, never actually seen this deck in action before. I've only heard whispers and rumors. All right, well, there it is. So, Underworld Breach, two mana enchantment. Each non-land card in your graveyard has escape. The escape cost equal to the card's mana cost plus three, exiling three cards. In your end step, sacrifice it. So, they get to exile some cards and cast charter course. And you can see all the cards in your graveyard have escape. And they can possibly play their whole deck. I don't know, no, 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 it's gonna happen here. They're trying to do everything. Um, there's no rituals in Pioneer, so they use things like hidden stirrings, just untapped lands. Um, with a Baral in play, hidden stirrings is basically a ritual. So, well, they play the Lotus Field too, I'm not actually sure though. I don't know if the fairy messes with them at all, I don't think it does. Yeah, I don't know what they were thinking when they printed this card. <laughs> like, just like the most obvious combo card of all time. But. Most of these decks play things like a. Uh, it bounced it, sure. Like Tome Scour. Is that fully. They didn't attack my Teferi? That's a huge mistake. Even if you're a combo deck, still gotta attack, my friend, you know? Alright, so... Maybe they're smart, and they have something that Teferi makes not work, and they wanted to just, uh... get Teferi out of place. I'm definitely bouncing this Brawl, I think. Let me loot first. Um, we're probably casting the Mizzet. Let's just take a little look. A little looky loo. We're not playing a copy of uh, on War Ego or anything in the main deck, so not much we can draw to, honestly. But just dump Paradise Druid and draw a third copy of Nim Nimbus Reborn. That's not good. Uh, all right. I mean, we're gonna bounce this and draw a card. We'll bring the light. We're gonna look at our deck list and see if there's anything we can get with the, anything we can get that matters here. Um, I think playing a. It's cool. Campbell, the cyborg, could be a good thing, too. Other end, Verdict, Teferi, Uthkaya. Yeah, nothing Nothing we have stops what they're doing, so we're just going to play the old uh, the old Nib Father here and just try and kill them before they can do stuff, which is probably not going to happen, but uh, Euro or Bring to Light. Let's take Euro and Verdict. So, well, like, we can sneak attack out a Siege Rhino next turn. You know, like, and just attack for 10. It's not the end of the world, but... Alright. Uh, 
Cyborg, we have two Rest in Peace and Slaughter Games. Slaughter Games is a good one. I'm not sure how they win. I think it's like Thassa's Oracle, I think. All right, just a setup turn here. Even having like a an anti graveyard card in the main might be reasonable. Uh, that wasn't bad. Just can even just kill the brawl. If I leave up a removal spell to kill Thassa's Oracle, I'm sure they have a way to like get around that. I don't know if that's that's, that's their wing edition or not. I just don't know, I don't have a deck very well, so um Let me leave up the Coligan's command, she can kill a an Electromancer, I guess. Yeah, we're trying to get Siege Rhino to attack them and uh, just try and kill them, I guess. Hostage Shaker, we could steal their Brawl, but that's kind of kind of thin. Let's get that. Drain, white, black, blue. Both of Kaya, kill this. Um. And then just attack them. And say a little prayer, I guess. And they're at six, and we have a six six to play, so and they have blink of an eye, I suppose, but the bad news is that I can't uh you know, chronic flooding is a one of the ways they feel this is it keeps tapping the land on tapping the land and filling the graveyard. Can't F6 because uh, I have this cold against command I might want to use. Cast hidden stirrings, sure. You know a card's broken when it makes you want to put the card Chronic Flooding in your deck. You know? So the silly part of escape, obviously, is that the card keeps going back to the graveyard, so you can just keep doing stuff. Treasure cruise. That's interesting. I mean, I imagine we're just we're just dead here, and they're just gonna find the the oracle and kill us. Like they just keep they just keep flooding. It's just flooding plus the the cipher is just. You just get three cards, do it again, get three cards, do it again, draw your deck. So if we added Abrupt Decay here, it might actually be enough to win the game, unfortunately. But we have Coligan's Command, we can't kill a 1-3. Tell a joke. What makes the sound oom um, oom? Um. A cow walking backwards. Oh, 
Hmm. So, mostly just want to see the recognition. Again, I think it's Thassa's Oracle, but... In the sideboard, we have uh, two copies of... Two copies of Rest in Peace. Definitely want a Campbell in the main or board. This Campbell's also just like fine against the red decks and stuff, too. I think it's control decks. Campbell is a 2-3 uh, Orzhov legend for 3 mana. That says whenever your opponent plays a non-creature spell, uh, you drain them for 2. Which is pretty good. Um, it's another Orzhov card for, for Nim, is it? It's good against combo decks. It's a good tutor target. Don't want to play a main deck copy of Unward Egos. So that card's just so bad. But, yep, there you go. Okay. So if we had a kill spell here, they actually just lose. Uh, but this has 3 Devotion. Or three toughness, not two, and we have Cole against command. So So that's his Oracle is uh devote look at top top X cards of your library where X is your devotion count to blue, and you put one of your on top of your library rest on the bottom. If you look at your entire library this way, you win the game. So it's like a lab maniac uh type of pseudo card. So I mean, despite the fact that we literally didn't do anything in that game, we still almost won, which is pretty cool, so um, let's look at our, our sideboard here. So we have these two resting pieces, these two mystical disputes. Um, I guess Rakdos returns? It's kind of slow. Slaughter games, Thought Erasure. Definitely combo decks tend to prey on decks like this, kind of like the slow, clunky, mid-range grindfest decks. Um, I don't think we're in the market for this. Oh, it's hand and graveyard? All right, never mind, we are. Um, and we're gonna cut everything slow. So, Oligan's Command, Supreme Verdict, Utter End, Hostage Taker, Nahiri. Um, I like the Decays and the Rural Spells. Uthakai is probably fine. I'm cutting Traverse is fine. Maybe got the Euros because we're bringing Rest in Peace. And Euros is just like pretty slow because we're not going to be trading resources. And uh, yeah. And then I think I like Oath of Kaya. Maybe four removal spells is enough. We do want to kill their Barals if possible, but. Bouncing out the fairy is also really good too, so. Um, so this looks much better. Yeah, obviously we have much more interaction now, so. I imagine they can't beat a rest in peace. Obviously, it's this is a great graveyard deck. <laughs> great analysis, Jim. That's why they pay me the big bucks. Um, so we got rest in peace. Slaughter games, dispute, some kill spells. Again, if we just had an, had an, an, abrupt, an abrupt decay there, uh, they couldn't win. They would have gone off. We just killed the Oracle. Unless the... Oh, wait. I'm, I'm, I'm being dumb. That does not work. You can't kill the Oracle because the it's just a trigger. So the Oracle doesn't need to be in play. It's not Lab Maniac. Okay, never mind. So that's not true. I am, I am lying to all of you. Sure, everyone's already popped down in the comments. You idiot! That's not how you stop the Asses Oracle. Well, I got there. All right, I got there finally. This one's interesting. Um, it needs a Greenland, but we have Sylvan Caryatid. Once we get a Greenland, we have Rakdos Return off of the Caryatids and a Thought Erasure and a Decay for a creature, and we have a Scry and a Surveil for a Green Source. I'm gonna keep this. I'm gonna keep this. I think there's an argument that these Scrylands could just be more... Oh, no. Could be more Trilands. Because you're just looking for colors anyway. I mean, this is obviously our best card against them, but we just can't cast it. Um... I think we keep it. <sighs> Maybe not. Because then I have Thought Erasure and Surveil next turn, try and find a land.
I mean, they obviously can't win with this cards in play. I'm going to keep it. This is mega risky, but I don't think this matchup is great for us. So let's just try and do it. The surveil on Thought Arash is going to be pretty important. We're going to get two looks at a green or white land, which we do have plenty of. You know, we do have a lot of them. We can also draw another Thought Erasure. We can also draw a Mystical Dispute. This is a big risk. Alright, their hand is. Discovery dispersal, discovery dispersal, negate strategic planning. So, just a bunch of wheel spinning crap and a negate. I'm taking the negate. Oh, yes, God, yes. yes. That's what's up. Oh my God. Planning. So next turn, Sylvan carries it, and then rip. So taking the gate feels nice. I don't want to cast with our two mana spells next turn, though. We gotta tap out anyway. So chart a course. Discarding a thingy. All right, here we go. It is time. Rest in peace. I love to see it. Let's get a paradise short out there. A little beat down machine. Can Rakdos return their hand? Let's see what's up here. Even exiling those seven cards is nice since it slows down their velocity. Now they need to like rebuild their graveyards, even if they can deal with this. And then every spell they cast looking for a way to deal with it, just more cards going away, so you know they just need a critical mass of things in their graveyard. They have a shit in Reef. And they exile hidden stirrings and blink of an eye. That's interesting, they would exile a blink of an eye. Alright, so let's get a planes and Rakdos return for four. If they have a negate, so be it. Because they need a negate and a way to deal with this resting beast. They did they just they just they just did that. They just discarded a blink of an eye. So it might mean they already have an answer to rest in peace, so make them answer both here. All right, so that's that. So I mean, like, they're gonna bounce this. Then we're gonna Rakdos return. They only have one card left. Um, and they have to win next turn or have a way to stop Rest in Peace next turn. So, it's a little sus, but. Scoop leg? Yeah. Cool. Sideboarding wins the day. We'd love to see it. Um, I think we're standing pat for game three here. And Thought Distortion is a nasty magic card. What a rude card. Just can't be countered. Exile's entire hand and graveyard. It's a monster. It's a card that gives control players like me nightmares. Oh, 
Okay. I mean, it's not great. It's no hate cards, but good mana. We're going to keep. We have to ferry to bounce two drop. We have a removal spell. It's not awesome, but we've got good mana. We've got Ractus Return. Second Nib Isn't Reborn, not really what we're looking for, but I think honestly cutting one Nib might have been reasonable. It's not good. There's a real chance we like just die this turn, but they're going to turn three us in, in Pioneer. I mean, let's do your thing, you know, let's do your thing. Next, we need to draw a card. Teferi, Bounce Brawl, draw a card. Um, they don't negate a Mystical Dispute, so like the Teferi's not necessarily a lock, but... they shocking. It's a little scary. I don't know what costs a blue and a colorless. Oh, I'm sure. All right, flooding mill three, one blue, hidden stirrings. Are they turn three killing us here? I got four card combo to kill us on turn three. You need the flooding and the baral and the stirrings and the underworld breach. No, not yet. Uh, so they surveil, putting two cards in the graveyard and drawing a card. All right. Maybe we uh, maybe we decay the chronic flooding here. This is a weird one. I only have three cards. Um, if we decay chronic flooding, like they can just draw more, I guess. We probably can't to ferry this turn. It's basically just like do you want to decay the brawl or decay the flooding. Flooding is definitely one of the main pieces. But if they play Underworld, whatever, they can just, like, recast the Flooding anyway. They also only have three cards in hand. I could just Rack to turn them for two here. That doesn't even feel that bad. And they just have to draw. I mean, if they draw Underworld, whatever, we lose. But... Um... Basically, just what it comes down to. If I kill Baral, I mean, killing Baral actually does make things pretty awkward for them. I mean, I guess they need to, they need to have a land. So they can't go Underworld and do stuff without a land. It's an interesting spot. If they Underworld, they can just recast the Chronic Flooding and the Hidden Stirrings. I think we're gonna kill Baral. Um, I think we're gonna kill Baral, play Druid, get their hand next turn. I guess I actually hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm being stupid. I could just leave up Abrupt Decay, and if they find the thing, I just kill it. Yeah, let's just do that, actually. That makes stupid. Like, as long as I have Decay up, I can just kill the Underworld thing. Let's then mill some cards. Cast Opt. And they obviously can't counter it or stop it, so... Yeah. They're going to escape one thing, and that is kill with a breach. Now I can actually kill it before they can even cast anything. So they, they definitely, they screwed this up. By, by, by putting a trigger on the stack and allowing me to respond before they cast a spell, now I can just kill this thing before they can even do anything. So. Giving your opponent priority is not necessarily a great idea. So one minute for Charter Course, so they have another Underworld Breach. Now I can't even cast it, so... And now I get their hand, too. Bring the light. 
or I should get rest in peace. But they could have a uh, mystical dispute. So pretty sure I should get their hand here. They draw exactly under World Breach, we're dead. But next turn we get to bring to light for a uh, rest in peace, so. Let's get just for three. They had one, okay. Here's number three, I guess. I mean, might as well have done it for three, but it doesn't really matter. All right, and no cards in hand. Here they go, breach off the top, we're dead. Now they're attacking. Charter of course, draw two. Cool. All right. Okay, that was good too. Um, so now we to ferry and thought erasure draw step. Because also they they just issued two new cards and didn't play them, so they're counter spells. Um, I want to cast Bring Delight having it countered, so let's start with the uh, Teferi. So, they counter Teferi, we'll cast Thought Erasure. Okay. So let's um, plus Teferi and draw step Thought Erasure. Flooding land land. Heh! Or we'll just draw Rest of Beast. That works too. It's the old fashioned way. Yeah. Alright, cool. Um... So yeah, definitely an interesting combo deck. It's pretty busted, but it is soft to rest in peace, that's it for sure. So combo deck soft to graveyard hate. Tail as old as magic itself. 4-1 though. And our only loss was to the mono black deck, which drew the kill spell on the exact possible turn with no cards in hand to, to kill us in game three. Or if they hadn't drawn exactly a kill spell that turn, we, we, won, we won the match. So close to a 5-0. Close to a 5-0. Um, this deck's real. This deck is 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 really real, and it's like I said, it's kind of ridiculous because I don't know how the hell you optimize this deck uh, with so many one ofs and lands and stuff. Um, you can probably only hope to ever get close to the right list, but this is real. So if you like the Mizzet Reborn, you like multicolor decks, you like grinding, you like playing, you like playing cube drafts, um, this is the deck for you in Pioneer. Check it out. A um, lot of fun. A lot of fun. Going forward, I think I would cut the Coligans Command for a Campbell in the main deck, because Campbell gives us the ability to have a, a main deck hate card against uh, combo decks without being a dead card otherwise, like on Mordigo would be. And I'll probably just cut the Colgun's Command completely. And otherwise, I'm pretty happy. Pretty happy with the list. If you're really scared of the combo deck, you can board on the rest in peace. But I think we have a nice spread here. I kind of wouldn't mind a Knight of Autumn in the main too, but I don't know what I would cut. Um, I guess if we're cutting the Coligans command, it kind of makes sense to do that. Um, eh, I'm not sure what I would cut. Maybe Hostage Taker, but Hostage Taker's pretty good. So, I don't know. Like I said, you could probably spend hours and hours and hours and days and days and days and weeks and weeks and weeks trying to figure out how to optimize this list. But, um, a lot of fun. So, Nim is Reborn, a real deal in Pioneer. Remember, folks, like I said, we have a companion article to this video on CoolStuffInc.com. Hop on over there. Give it a click. Also, do your shopping. Go buy your Nimbus Reborns. Go buy your Uros. Go buy your Theros Beyond Death cards. Um, as well as your, your supplies and your board games, your miniatures, everything you want. Uh, CoolStuffInc.com has it. So CoolStuffInc.com. Check it out. Promo code JIM5. JIM, the number five. For 5% off your order on CoolStuffInc.com. I will see you next week as well as Friday for uh, another article here on coolstuffinc.com. I'm Jim Davis. I'll see you fine folks later. Have a good one.